don't know what you don't know until you know. This has become my life's motto since having my son, James. You see, for most of my life, I've dreamed of two things, being a mother and a teacher. I couldn't wait to have a mini-me running around and teach them all of our family traditions. And in 2014, our dream was to be realized. The nursery was decorated, and all of the gadgets and gizmos we were told we needed were in place. We perfectly timed our pregnancy with the school year, so I had enough days left to take off the rest of the year and return as a full-time teacher in the fall, like all of my friends and colleagues had done. Teachers. <laughs> then we had James. It was a chaotic birth where everything around me was in motion, and James Allen O'Leary entered this world via emergency C-section on St. Patrick's Day with a tiny little red tuft of hair. They told me to pull back my shirt and get ready for some skin to skin, only he never came. James let out one cry, and that was it. So they rushed him off to the NICU with my dazed husband following, and I laid on the table wondering what the heck happened. I didn't drink or smoke, and I even gave up caffeine six months before trying to get pregnant, and for a teacher? That's huge. When I was finally wheeled in to meet my son, the doctor surrounded my husband and me as they told us the news. It looks like James has some markers to indicate he has Down syndrome. First is the hole in his heart. He'll need to, go, he'll need to have open heart surgery. We're not sure how soon, so we're taking him by ambulance to San Francisco right away. The doctor kept on talking, but I didn't hear a word he was saying. Down syndrome, heart issues, but he was only six days early. I did everything I was supposed to during this pregnancy and nothing I shouldn't. Clearly, he was wrong. Well, the doctor wasn't wrong, but my bias about Down syndrome and raising a child with disabilities was. Fast forward to eight years of loving James. I know. And I've realized the many amazing gifts that have come from raising a child with disabilities. Along with far too many challenges our family has faced dealing with the way the world treats anyone who is different. I don't see Down syndrome when I look at James. I see a goofy, empathetic boy who loves soccer, Taylor Swift, and bugging his little sister. He's just a kid. He's just my kid. I love him as much as my parents love me and you love your kids. Loving him just as he is has also opened my eyes to the way children with disabilities are treated within the educational system. Teaching is my passion and profession, and James, who took me away from being a traditional teacher, has ironically been my life's greatest teacher. Remember my mantra, you don't know what you don't know until you know? Well, as a teacher, I loved all of my students, and I wanted to create a space where everyone was engaged, felt welcomed, and that they belonged. I attended all the professional development and even won a few awards, but looking back, I realize I wasn't the best teacher to all students. I'm just one teacher, I think. How in the world am I supposed to reach those kids that are way above grade level while also reaching those that are so far below? How can I manage behaviors I didn't understand? And shamefully, I'll admit that my mindset was those kids belong in a different class. The passion was there. The love of kids and learning and teaching was definitely there. But my mindset was not, and our system wasn't set up to support me, even if it was. I was overwhelmed when I'd find out two weeks before school started that I'd have a kid with special needs, and I was scared as hell. I mean, how can they expect this of me? It just doesn't make sense for a high-achieving student to be in the same class as a student with Down syndrome. They're so different. But now I ask the question, are they really? Let's be honest, all children are different, all people are different. I don't believe there is another person on earth with the exact same strengths and challenges that you have or I have. There is no normal. It is a myth we need to dispel to be able to reach all of our students because it is possible. If we're able to look past the label that hangs over kids' heads, making us aware of their deficits, if we create a connection with them and realize that kids are just kids, including those who yearn for belonging even if they can't communicate it in a way that we understand. We hope that most kids feel a sense of belonging at home, right? Their families make the appropriate accommodations to make them just part of the family. Like, for instance, at our house, when we eat dinner, 
my husband, our daughter, and I all eat solid food, while my son eats pureed foods due to his extensive medical trauma. We don't call this inclusion dinner. It's not special needs dinner, right? It's how our family eats dinner. School is the very first community outside of the home where students begin to learn what society thinks of them. When students aren't included in their school community, we are setting them up for a life of exclusion. We teach them that if their disability or difference shows too much, we'll send them over there. It's our unwritten disability curriculum that outlines a narrative of how we view the disabled. Let me ask, have you ever gone somewhere and seen someone you perceived as different from you and felt uncomfortable? Or maybe your child blurted out something super embarrassing that made you turn beet red as you shushed them? Yep, me too. Our instincts tell us to shush our kids when they ask why that person looks different or is acting weird so that we don't cause harm. But as someone who's watched my own son's eyes go from hopeful when he sees new potential friends to devastated when they aren't sure how to interact, I beg you, please don't stare, but show you care. A friend of mine's daughter, who has physical and intellectual delays, went on a field trip with her class. And on that trip, not one family spoke to, interacted with, or even looked at them. She felt invisible. This story reminds me not to leave it to someone else to interact because I'm probably not the only one doing that and they are likely as isolated as my friend and her daughter. Please, find your brave. Just smile and say hi. Push past those feelings of discomfort and fear and just say hi. Ask questions to find similarities. Oh, I see you have a soccer ball on your shirt. Do you like soccer? Me too. What if they can't or don't talk back? That's okay. There's usually someone there who can help, and even if not, I'm certain they appreciate just being seen. We all want to feel like we matter. And lastly, if you see someone who's being left out or mistreated, you can be the one to invite them to join you. Even if no one else is, you can be the one to make someone's day. I know all of this because I have a connection to disability, my son. He is the reason I co-founded Common Ground Society to remind the world that despite our differences, we are all connected to one another. He's taught me that all kids are just kids, kids who turn into teens and adults who are worthy of acceptance, inclusion, and belonging in our community. It starts with hello and ends with being a part of us. That is what belonging is about. Thank you.